As you might have seen on this channel, we try to make the most flexible and coolest film studio in the center of Oslo, Norway. One of the coolest things about our studio is the projector, which we have used for several music videos. However, for these shoots, we have only used a static background, meaning the background didn't correspond with the camera movement. So with all the buzz about virtual productions lately, we thought, will it be possible to create a mini virtual production studio here in our small studio? A virtual production setup for smaller productions which doesn't cost a million dollars to build. This is not a tutorial, it's more of an experiment to see how far we can push our studio. So join us in this experiment where we're going to use the Vive tracking system, we're going to use Unreal Engine and also a quite special projector. Virtual production seems to be the new thing in the film industry, with series and films such as The Mandalorian, Batman and Dune and so on. And usually they have these huge LED walls displaying this uh, real-time rendered 3D environment that is uh, connected to the camera with a tracker so the background or the environment knows where the camera is at all times. Using this technique gives certain advantages over green screens, such as a more natural lighting and reflections, little or no need for post-production, and the actors can act better as they feel they are in the world, as opposed to just being in front of a green wall. This looks so cool, so let's try it in our studio. And after all, you know, we're calling this studio the most flexible studio in the center of Oslo, so we should do this. So, what equipment was needed in order to create such a setup? The first thing we needed was a tracking system. And through some research, we found out that Vive's newly released Mars system was our best bet. This system is tailor-made for virtual production for smaller indie companies. So we reached out to them and they were happy to send over some units for us to loan to experiment with. So we have gotten finally the package. This is the HTC Vive Mars system, which is a tracking system, but I have no idea how this works. So actually, I think I have to read the manual for once because this is uh, a lot of stuff. After reading the manual and checking out some tutorials, it turned out that the Vive Mars system was pretty easy to set up. It basically consists of two base stations, a tracker, and a Mars box. If you move the camera when projecting a flat image onto the screen, nothing will happen and the audience will immediately see that there's something wrong with the background. However, if you connect the trackers, the scene will move together with the camera, creating the illusion that the background is part of the set. Today we are gonna do the first proper test. We are gonna get some walls in here, we're gonna project on the back wall. Now we're gonna set up all the stuff, the trackers, um, and see if it actually works. The base stations are put up high to see where the trackers are. The trackers, or rovers as the Vive calls them, are attached to your camera. You can also use another rover to reposition your scene or attach them to light fixtures for real-time tracking of those. These rovers are then connected to your Mars box, which connects everything to your computer. However, the hardware won't do any good if you don't have the software. And normally for virtual productions, uh, people use Unreal Engine. And this is to create environments in 3D and also to track the camera and create virtual cameras and so on. The only problem is that we don't know how to use Unreal Engine. I have quite a bit of experience from other 3D software such as Blender or Cinema 4D, so I thought Unreal should be doable. However, Unreal is the least intuitive program I think I've ever used. This is Probably because the program is at its core meant to develop games, but which in recent years have gotten this new use case of virtual productions because it's so good at rendering realistic 3D scenes in real time. The program just haven't caught up to doing this in an intuitive way and there's still like hacks that you have to do in order to make stuff work properly. So I kind of just wanted to give up. Need a hand? All right, let's see what we can do here. 
So the first thing I like to do is to use the envi what we call the environment light mixer. And so this is a tool that allows us to very quickly and very easily create a very quick and dirty sky, sunset, anything, just a basic lighting setup. So we are ready to go and start placing our assets. Yet. I've been using Unreal since 2008, and so that's when Unreal Engine 3 was out. And it kind of always has been a game engine, but lately, since I would say maybe 2016 or so, people have started using Unreal for more than just games. So they've been using it for you know, virtual production, filmmaking, uh, people use it for feature, like full CG movies now. Uh, so it, I can't really call it just a game engine anymore, because it's not. So yeah, so I started off my career in the games industry, and then eventually I made my way into the film industry instead, because I quickly realized that I really just like creating pretty scenes, nice looking shots and stuff. And in games, there's always like the performance thing to be, to, to kind of keep it into consideration. Some of my work, I mean, I've worked on Black Panther, I've worked on HBO's Watchmen, um, and a bunch of other feature film that I'm not allowed to talk about because of NDAs. Yeah. Uh, you know how it is, but um, yeah, so it's been, it's been a wild ride. So I think having worked in both VFX and in games has kind of given me an insight. It really helped me using Unreal because you know I use Unreal since 2008, and so I understand the needs of both the VFX world and the game world. And when those, now that those two worlds are starting to converge, um, it's kind of given me a, a little bit of an edge on the competition. Yeah. So, you know, but what should we create on the outside? Because yeah, we have some desert stuff already yeah, loaded. Yeah, seems like it. It would be nice to have something in the foreground. Um, I don't know if we can download some. There is a, a new trees pack that we can get on the marketplace that is actually really good and can, for free now. The marketplace thing is so easy to get so, mega scans yep. and make something really quick. It's a lot, very exciting time. It's still early days, but yeah, it's, it's coming. It, it's all like playing Lego because now we have all of the assets we need. We're using Quixel's mega scans. We have rocks. We have trees. We have plants. We've got everything you need to start literally just kit bashing and placing yeah. Lego, yeah. creating your own scene. You don't need to have any kind of programming background. You don't need to have any kind of 3D modeling background. You can just grab what you want and place it in the scene. Not that long ago, like maybe five, 10 years ago, you had to make all of those things. Make every single rock, every single tree, every single plant. And that was extremely expensive. So imagine for a tree, it could take a senior artist a week or two to make. So paying a, a senior artist full time for two weeks is not cheap. So now it's just click and drop. So it's, uh, it's it definitely sense. a game changer. Uh, so it would be fun to try to create create like a forest outside this window or something like that. Yep. And maybe when we move the camera, then the perspective will change absolutely. a bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you think we have uh, what we need to do that? Like uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we don't need that much. Okay. So uh, we can get we're ready to get started. Yeah. Like. Yep. That seems to be working. Now, as we have the tracking and the software sorted out, there's only one thing left, and that's how to show the image on the back wall. Uh, normally, uh, like Witcher Production Studios, would use like huge LED walls to do this, but we don't have the space for this and also not the budget. So we have to do it another, another way. But we do have a projector hanging in the ceiling. Could we use that for Witcher Production? Our projector is not like any other cheap projector out there. It is a high-end Norse P2. The Norse is a company based in my hometown Fredrikstad here in Norway, the most beautiful city in Norway actually, and it makes these projectors for big clients internationally. Uh, we were lucky enough to borrow it in our studio as they wanted to really know how good it was for filmmaking. So I thought it would be interesting to check out how are actually these projectors made and how do they even work. I headed down to Fredrikstad where I was allowed to enter their facilities. Before entering the, the production inside, you have to have some shoe covers on because we are producing electronics. Very important that the static electricity is, is very low. I'm a very grounded person, so... You are very... <laughs> That's good. You are allowed to enter our facility. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so this is where you assemble this is the all the pieces? This is the assembling of, of, uh, of the projector. So red, green and blue are uh, separate uh, as they are here and this is the green one together they make the white light or the full color light of the uh, of the projector as with the rgb pixels we see in most screens the projector also uses a mix of red green and blue light sources to create all the different colors so this particular device the the dmd is a digital micro mirror device 
So the DMD is basically like a camera sensor, but instead of gathering light coming through the camera lens, it reflects the light coming from the projector and out. Inside the projector, there are three light sources, red, green, and blue, like I have in front of now. And the sensor, as we can call it, has millions of pixels or mirrors uh, like this one. To get the different colors, it's just tilting the mirrors in different directions. So if it wants red, it does like this, green and blue. And if you want to mix a color, like you want to mix green and blue, you just change between green and blue. And it does this several thousand times per second. So that will give you a turquoise color. Because I know on cheaper projector, they can turn a certain color over time. They go warmer or cooler or... Exactly. So if for some reason, the, uh, one of the light sources degrade over time, we know how to, we can adjust the two other colors to maintain the same relative brightness. So basically projectors are using lenses that are very similar to the ones we're using in our cameras. The light is just traveling in the opposite direction. Actually, it's quite common to use older projector lenses on cameras for a vintage look. And I'm sure if we got our projection lens adapted to our cameras, it would make an amazingly sharp lens. So most of our products are used in simulators. And what is important then is of course high frame rate. Because this projector is used for simulations and other applications where it's basically running 24 seven, this being military flight simulations, Formula One teams, museum installation, the quality control North does when manufacturing is very thorough. They test the projectors by running them several thousand hours and every unit get calibrated to have the exact right colors. In the car industries, there are Hyundai's and there are Porsche, and there are some people are willing to pay more money for something that's better. So it's important for us to have full control over the development as well as the manufacturing. Now Willem is making the, the background and it's interesting because there's so many aspects of how to make it realistic. Like he has to put in uh, what kind of focal length we have now, the height of the camera, uh, the sensor size, and also it's really cool because we can see live how it looks and you can change the exposure of the outside. So now you're adjusting the exposure. As you said, it's, it's, it should look like it's been filmed. So it's probably a bit overexposed. It's nice to see here on the screen like live how much we still expose. Maybe a bit darker. Is that a benefit like to see it in on set? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's really nice to kind of see in-camera VFX is a lot of fun. It's, it's really exciting because what you see is what you get. So this helps the talent, this helps the director, this helps everyone on set kind of get a much a better preview of what they can expect. We also have the RGB lamps in the ceiling. So it would be fun to test it out to like see if we can recreate the yep. light from the scene with the aperture lights in the ceiling. It's so fun that we are in the kitchen doing this. <laughs> in the kitchen, yeah. Yep, let's do it. Okay. Ready? Yes. And action. Great, thank you. Wow. So what's interesting to see here is that you have the leaves in the foreground, stays in place, and then you see the, the depth and the perspective ch changes according to, accordingly to the camera. Uh, the projector has always been like this flat image when we filmed uh, using it in the studio. But now it actually felt that there was like a 3D space outside a window. It was just based on the tracking of the camera connected to Unreal Engine and then to the projector. It just tricked my brain. It was just, it was so awesome to see. Oh, you can do so many things. It's just, oh, it's so much fun. I'm just looking forward to do this more. Even with this super high-end projector, it is cheaper than if we were to have an LED wall. 
if you have a cheaper consumer projector, you will get similar result that we had during this shoot, but you'll most likely have a bit darker image with less contrast and the colors might not be as accurate. So if you have the money to spend on a big LED wall, that is going to have benefits over our projector. The biggest issue we found with this was that the image projected could get quite washed out from our lamps. So we had to use black fabric as much as possible around the set to make the light bounce less around the scene. Additionally, your subjects and props cannot be placed too close to the screen as they might cast shadows. This issue can be solved by using a short throw projector. Creating a scene like this, I like for 10, year, 10 years ago, I think it would be really hard. It would, right? Yeah. It's yeah. not completely out of reach anymore. Yeah. So, definitely, it's come a long way. So then, you know, it ends up with, uh, it's only your creativity that stops yeah. you in a way. And guys, if you want to check out uh, William's channel and learn more about Unreal Engine, right? Because that's yeah. the main thing on the channel. That's my main thing, yeah. yeah. Teaching Unreal Engine, creating a lot of cinematic stuff. And I saw that you created this Halo uh, uh, yeah. film. Yeah. Do you like Halo, the game? Uh, yeah, I'm a long time fan. This was a really fun experiment, and uh, thanks again to William for helping out. Most likely we're going to make more videos about this, testing out, experimenting with virtual production. So subscribe if you haven't, and stay tuned because there are coming more videos very soon on the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again. Hallå!